When Yellowstone supervolcano erupts, it's going to be winter in the northern hemisphere. And this is going to be an especially harsh winter. The eruption of the supervolcano will have far-reaching effects on the climate of our planet due to the massive amount of ash that will fill the atmosphere. This ash will block out the sun, leading to a volcanic winter. In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when Yellowstone erupts, specifically how it'll affect temperatures around the world. We've got a lot of information to go over, so let's jump into it. Volcanic winter. When a volcano erupts, it releases materials that have been compiled within the Earth's crust for millions of years. These materials include, but aren't limited to ash, sulfur dioxide, and water vapor. It's these materials that can impact the temperature of our planet. Yellowstone National Park is home to the largest active volcano in the contiguous United States and also the largest supervolcano in the world. A supervolcano is defined by the scale of its potential eruption. They are ranked by the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, which measures how violently a volcano erupts. Supervolcanoes have a VEI rating of 8. To put into perspective, Mount Estint Helens, which erupted in 1980, had a VEI rating of 5. The most recent eruption of Yellowstone was a VEI 3. In the contiguous United States, there are four active supervolcanoes. In addition to Yellowstone, there's Long Valley, California, Crater Lake, Oregon, and Medicine Lake, California. Worldwide, there are roughly 12 supervolcanoes. Of those 12, only three have had eruptions within the last 10,000 years. Those three are Yellowstone, Mount Toba in Indonesia, and Cerro Toco in Nicaragua. Yellowstone hasn't erupted since the Pleistocene epoch, which began about 2.6 million years ago and ended roughly 11,700 years ago. During the most recent eruption of Yellowstone, which occurred 640,000 years ago, the magma chamber emptied by about half. If the entire magma chamber were to empty during an eruption, the consequences for the planet would be disastrous. Yellowstone has experienced three major eruptions in the past. The three major eruptions were all more than one million years ago. The oldest of the three was 2.1 million years ago. The next two happened in close succession, with one being 1.3 million years ago and the other 640,000 years ago. Each of these three eruptions released between 2,000 and 5,000 cubic kilometers of material. The largest eruption of the three emptied out about half of the magma chamber. So if the whole magma chamber were to empty during an eruption, the explosion would be even larger than any of these three. For the purpose of this video, we're going to assume that the whole magma chamber empties, and we're going to assume that the eruption is the size of the largest eruption at the start of the Pleistocene epoch. Let's talk about what happens when Yellowstone erupts. The first thing that happens is the ground shakes. An earthquake swarm occurs before, during, and after the initial eruption. The initial eruption is going to release energy equivalent to hundreds of 100 megaton nuclear bombs. This energy is going to radiate outward from Yellowstone in all directions. The surrounding area will likely be devastated. Everything for miles around the volcano will either be burned up or buried under tens of meters of ash. Within a few hours after the initial eruption, the ash cloud will begin to expand away from Yellowstone. Eventually, the ash will make its way into the upper atmosphere. This process will take days. Once the ash enters the upper atmosphere, it will begin to spread around the globe. Winds will push the ash to the east and west. The rotation of the earth will also help the ash to spread. Some of the ash will fall back down to the surface, but most of it will remain suspended in the atmosphere for months. This ash cloud will have a cooling effect on the planet because it will block out the sun. The surface temperature of the planet will decrease by an average of one degree Celsius. For the first few weeks, the northern hemisphere will experience summer, but it will feel more like autumn. Temperatures will be cool and there will be high winds. As the northern hemisphere moves into fall and winter, the temperatures will continue to drop. The amount that they drop will vary depending on where you are on the planet. Let's take a look at what happens to temperatures around the world after the eruption. Keep in mind that these are averages. There will be a range of temperatures in each region. 
North America. The immediate area around Yellowstone will, of course, be the hardest hit. All life in the immediate area will be wiped out. Cities within 100 kilometers of Yellowstone will be destroyed. Most of the northern tier of the United States will be buried under several meters of ash. The ash will cover portions of Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Large parts of Canada will also be affected. South of Yellowstone, the temperatures will drop as much as 6 degrees Celsius below normal. East of Yellowstone, the temperatures will drop as much as 4 degrees Celsius below normal. West of Yellowstone, the temperatures will drop as much as 2 degrees Celsius below normal. Along the west coast, there will still be rain and snow, but it will be less than normal. On the east coast, there will be more snow than normal, Europe. The UK will experience a winter that is 3 degrees cooler than normal. There will be precipitation above the normal levels. Ireland will be the same as the UK, while Iceland will be slightly warmer than normal. Norway, Sweden and Finland will be about 2 degrees cooler than normal, with precipitation near normal. Denmark will be 2 degrees cooler than normal with below normal precipitation. Germany, Poland and the Baltic states will be about 1 degree cooler than normal with near normal precipitation. Russia. Western Russia will be 3 degrees cooler than normal with above normal precipitation. Ukraine will be 2 degrees cooler than normal with near normal precipitation. Belarus will be 2 degrees cooler than normal with below normal precipitation. Kazakhstan will be 1 degree cooler than normal with above normal precipitation, Asia. India will be one degree cooler than normal with near normal precipitation. Pakistan, Afghanistan and Iran will be two degrees cooler than normal with below normal precipitation. Japan will be two degrees cooler than normal with above normal snowfall. China will experience the least change with temperatures only being one degree cooler than normal. There will be near normal precipitation. Africa most of Africa will not be greatly affected. There will be a slight cooling, though, with temperatures dropping by about 1 degree Celsius. Precipitation will be near normal across the continent. Australia. Australia will see a slight cooling of 1 degree Celsius. There will be below normal precipitation across the entire continent. Volcanic winter timeline. Yellowstone erupting is going to cause chaos around the planet. There are going to be years of dealing with the aftermath. Year 1. Summer. The ash cloud will reflect the sunlight away from the planet. Temperatures will be below normal across the northern hemisphere. There will be crop failures. Food supplies will dwindle. Energy prices will skyrocket. Countries will scramble to find alternative energy sources. Without warning, the world is plunged into darkness as the ash cloud completely obscures the face of the sun. Global temperatures plummet as much as 7 degrees Celsius. Cities without sufficient heating systems become uninhabitable. Mass migrations begin. Millions flee north in search of warmth and food. With transportation infrastructure severely disrupted, desperate refugees eke out a living by scavenging. Bandits and roving gangs prey on refugee columns. Governments struggle to maintain order as widespread civil unrest erupts. Year 1. Winter. Snow falls for the first time in many areas of the Northern Hemisphere, but it's not the kind of snow that melts in the spring. It's a thin layer of ash that accumulates on the ground and stays there for months. Plants die. Crops fail. Food shortages worsen. Fires rage as people burn ash for warmth. Governments distribute emergency rations as civil order breaks down. Earthquakes rock the northern tier of the United States and Canada. People flee from cities in fear of an atomic blast. Year 2. Summer. By now, the sun is little more than a dim ember in the ash-filled sky. Temperatures are well below freezing across the northern hemisphere. The ash begins to settle and drifts several meters deep in some areas. Isolated pockets of survivors struggle to grow food in the nutrient-poor ash. Water becomes scarce as rivers and lakes freeze over. Bands of desperate refugees roam the frozen wastelands hunting wild animals for food. Conflicts erupt between refugee bands as resources become scarcer. Governments collapse as their infrastructures crumble under the weight of the ash. Military forces seize power and establish martial law. Year 2. Winter. The Northern Hemisphere experiences its coldest winter in recorded history. 
Survivors huddle around weak fires trying to keep warm. Food and water are scarce. Disease and starvation take their toll on the survivors. Pockets of humanity cling to existence in the face of the volcanic winter. By the end of the second year, the ash has blocked out the sun for so long that the planet has entered a state of perpetual darkness. So, what can you do? If Yellowstone were to erupt, here's what you should do. You need to plan ahead. Here are a few things you'll want to have. Water, you're going to need plenty of water. Make sure you have at least three liters of water per person per day. Food, stockpile food that doesn't require cooking. Canned goods, dried goods and peanut butter are good options. Also make sure you have a way to cook the food you stockpile. If the power goes out, you're going to need a backup way to cook your food. A propane camp stove is a good option. Cash, you're going to need cash. After the eruption, there's going to be a run on food and other supplies. Cash is going to be necessary to purchase these supplies. A generator, you're going to need a generator to keep your electronics charged. A solar generator is probably your best bet. Medicine, you're going to need medicine. Make sure you have a good supply of any prescription medications. Also make sure you have basic over-the-counter medications like pain relievers and stomach medicine. Flashlight, you're going to need a flashlight and extra batteries. Warm clothing, you're going to need warm clothing. After the eruption, the temperature is going to drop significantly. Also, make sure you have warm sleeping bags. Now is the time to prepare. Don't wait until the last minute. Make sure you have everything you need to survive a winter like this. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you're subscribed.